Just as iron sharpens iron, so too, hopefully, these insights on inductive reasoning versus deductive reasoning will help to sharpen your mind as we develop the meta skill of thinking about our thinking. Induction and deduction are methods of reasoning, and when we look at their structure, we approach them from the viewpoint of mental models, where we essentially take a subject and objectify it so that we can manipulate it in our minds more effectively and apply it across disciplines. As we hone our definitions of what inductive and deductive reasoning are, we are developing razor-sharp thinking skills that lay at the heart of science and philosophy. So what is induction and deduction? Let us begin. Ancient Greek dialecticians recognized the importance of how words are defined when applying logic, and this is still true today. Induction, as we will handle it, is defined as the inference of a general law from particular instances, and deduction is defined as the inference of particular instances by reference to a general law or principle. Deduction can sometimes be thought of as top-down thinking, where the starting point is a universal statement that is widely believed to be true, and we then reason downward towards particular inferences that follow logically from that universal statement we began with. Induction is almost the mere opposite, as it can be thought of as bottom-up thinking, where we start with a sample of particular observations and infer a more universal statement of truth that logically follows from the particular observations. Because induction works in this manner, it is not guaranteed to produce absolutely true conclusions, whereas deduction, if begun with a true statement, logically leads to true conclusions. The shared purpose of induction and deduction is to use reason to prevent error. The method of induction infers a general rule from a few specific cases whereas the method of deduction shows that one theory follows from another. Inductive reasoning is based upon the axiom, what is true of the many is true of the whole. This axiom is based upon man's belief in the uniformity of nature. Inductive reasoning is a mental ladder by which we climb from particular facts to general laws, but the ladder rests upon the belief that the universe is governed by law. Aristotle, who is responsible for much of the foundation of modern reasoning, demonstrated deduction with his syllogisms, which take a form such as, All men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. Aristotle's deductive syllogistic logic was great for demonstrating logical truth. Deduction tries to provide certainty, and can guarantee that certainty if the argument is sound which is to say that it is both logically correct or valid and is built with true statements or premises. Deductive reasoning can provide certainty if it is properly composed. When a deductive argument is valid, its structure of premises or statements placed before the conclusion and the conclusion are logically correct. Yet it is still possible to be logically correct and have a false statement in the premises of the argument. When the premises are both logically correct and actually true, then we arrive at certainty, which is called a sound argument. A valid deduction can guarantee accuracy of the conclusion because deduction derives its conclusion logically from its premises, and valid arguments are always logically consistent. If the premises of the deduction are also known to be true, then the conclusion is considered sound because it is both true and logically correct. Aristotle's deductive syllogistic logic was great for bringing thoughts into harmony one with another, but when trying to discern the laws of nature, as is so important in a scientific age, a different method, known as inductive logic, was necessary. Inductive reasoning can demonstrate that a conclusion is likely to be true, but it cannot guarantee truth in the same logical manner that a sound deductive argument can. Reasoning inductively is about developing conclusions that are probably true rather than certainly true, 
and is an important step in developing hypotheses and theories about how the world works, which can then be tested more thoroughly as we gather greater data. Inductive arguments can be considered either strong or weak, similar to how a deductive argument can be considered valid or sound. A strong inductive argument provides a strong reason for accepting the argument's conclusion, whereas a weak inductive argument doesn't offer a credible reason for accepting the conclusion. John Stuart Mill is credited with formulating and articulating the logic of observation and explanation we know as inductive logic. Yet a much earlier figure, the Franciscan friar Roger Bacon, laid some of its groundwork. Roger Bacon basically said that there are essentially two ways of knowing, by argument and by experience. Having a question answered by an argument often will not make us feel certain, however, unless we can also draw upon results from experience. All knowledge either comes through words or through experience. Argument versus experience. Deductive logic and inductive logic each aim to protect us against the potential errors associated with these modes of conviction. Induction can sometimes lead to superstitious beliefs because a person may observe an apparent consistency and extrapolate a conclusion. If a visitor at a casino, for example, just started carrying a lucky rabbit's foot, and when they played their first slot machine, they won a nice prize, they could conclude the lucky rabbit's foot actually made them luckier. If they win again with their lucky rabbit's foot, it would most likely only strengthen their belief. If, however, they subsequently had a run of poor luck, they would most likely update their beliefs about whether or not the rabbit's foot actually made them luckier, a process or mental model in its own right called Bayesian thinking where a thinker modifies the probability of the truth of a hypothesis as new evidence comes to light. When we intermingle inductive inferences with deductive reasoning as we form and test hypotheses, we end up with what is considered the scientific method, which is responsible for so many of our present-day technological achievements. Induction is the process by which scientific inference allows us to jump from a particular case to arrive at a universal principle. Deduction is more knowledge-based, and induction is more observation-based. When we begin with a hypothesis, for example, we use deduction to make predictions about what will occur. True predictions uphold the theory, whereas false predictions disprove it. When using the scientific method, it is the observations processed through inductive reasoning which can lead to conclusions, and these conclusions, in turn, may form new hypotheses, which can then be tested rigorously to see if they can be disproved. Influential philosopher Karl Popper proposed that hypotheses cannot be proven, as we can only ever show that certain predictions are false. Hence we have an almost hierarchical intermingling of observations, ideas, and probable truth as we apply these two forms of reasoning in our search for fact. Legendary physicist Richard Feynman was quoted as saying, Religion is a culture of faith, science is a culture of doubt. Doubt is appeased by observing verifiable phenomenon through our physical senses, utilizing processes such as the scientific method to observe, measure, experiment, and test hypotheses often generated through inductive reasoning from observations. If a general law or truth is discovered in this manner, Deductive reasoning can be used to infer particular instances that can be predicted from this law. Where religion differs from the scientific method is that whereas science starts with the observable, religion often starts at the other end with spiritual, mental, general laws, revelations, or truths that get applied deductively to determine the particulars of proper behavior. Since much of religion deals with mind or spirit, there is often little that can be verified by our senses. This is essentially the territory of the battle that rages between science and religion up to this day. Hopefully what we've covered so far was helpful and has started to sharpen your thinking skills. And just to be sure, let's review the main ideas we've covered in order to help solidify this knowledge in our minds. Inductive reasoning is the inference of a general law from particular instances. And deductive reasoning is the inference of particular instances by reference to a general law or principle. 
Inductive reasoning is often considered bottom-up, whereas deductive reasoning is often considered top-down. Both inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning are important aspects of the scientific method, where data is gathered bottom-up through observations, which can lead to hypotheses, and the implications of these hypotheses are tested in a more top-down manner in order to see if they can be falsified or whether they form the basis of a theory or general principle, which can then lead to even more predictions that can be tested or made use of in this continuous cycle of knowledge discovery. We can often notice these same processes in our own lives as we observe phenomena and draw general conclusions, or make predictions based on general principles. These processes are constantly at play in the reasoning mind. If you enjoyed this video, it would be great if you could share it with others, give it a like, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel where we will continue to create great new content on mental models, thinking skills, life hacks, cognitive biases, and much more. Thanks for watching.